When designing aftermarket parts, in order to make the highest quality, fabrication skills aren't really the only thing that matters. The ability to gather feedback from the car in the process is just as important. So today we'll grab a couple engineers and we're going to look at a system we've designed in-house that helps a lot with the design and testing process for some of our past and future parts. We'll start with my buddy Jimmy to learn more. All right, we've got our RS here today. This is going to be our guinea pig. Uh, you can see it's got our carbon fiber intake on it. It's got an access port, of course. Uh, what's not out yet is what's kind of tucked underneath here. We've got a front mount intercooler that we're testing, and that's the subject for the day. Jimmy, tell us, uh, there's obviously some things that customers won't have on their car if they buy it from Ford and put our stuff on it. Run me through the setup that you have on here for testing right now. Sure, absolutely. So kind of later on in the design process, one of our calibrators wanted to get some feedback from the system itself while he's doing the OTS maps. Um, what we've done here is we've put a data logger on that we can get sensor data from various points along the intake tract that he can see in real time while he's actually tuning the car. What locations do you have the sensors on? So right now we've got them set up in four different points. We've got kind of an ambient sensor location that's in the air box and the, the inlet to the, to the radiator. Then we've got the intake, so just the tube between the filter and the compressor inlet. Then we've got between the compressor inlet and the inlet to the intercooler. And then we've got kind of post-cooling after the intercooler before the throttle body. Okay. And these, just to make sure we're clear, these are all sensors that we put on just for testing. These won't be on the parts when you buy them and put them on your car. That's and right. they're separate from the sensors that Ford's already got because, of course, it, we've got pressure sensors and, and uh, the ability to measure airflow just from the factory. But this is just for testing. Tell me in more detail about each part and what, what, which, what you used, why you decided to use those parts, and what the benefit is. Sure. So kind of as a baseline, we need to get ambient pressure and temperature, and I'll show you those sensors that we used. Sure. Um, so this is just a kind of an off-the-shelf pressure sensor that allows us to, to check pressure incoming into the, to the airbox. So that's just the world pressure. Sure. Um, we've got an intake temperature sensor that we've mounted inside of a copper tube. Um, this one is just the ambient, but the rest of them have an additional functionality that allows us to set the position of the sensor within the tube itself. Because if you get closer to the wall, you know, you don't really get an accurate reading of the bulk flow. So it's adjustable to make sure that you're getting the most useful information? Absolutely. And Absolutely. all four locations are using the same sensors? They are. Okay. We've We're made it simple to deploy to other platforms. Yeah, and that's the thing. We're looking at an RS today, but this kit is meant for use over and over for every car we support. It's not just a Ford thing, right? That's right. Awesome. That's right. So obviously on the dyno, when a, when a calibrator from Cobb is making off-the-shelf maps, um, it's obviously helpful for him to have a lot of data that helps him know what he needs to tweak with timing or boost control. But you're a mechanical engineer. Mm -hmm. you're, not a, you're not a tuner. But obviously this, guy, this helps you guys when you're designing parts. Talk a little more about that and what sure. the benefit is aside from calibration. Absolutely. So this allows us to validate um, both you know, in process as we're doing design and on the back end to make sure that the, the designs we're putting out are actually providing a, a good performance gain and really you know, how much we might have left on the table or not. Are we, are we really getting everything we can out of that specific design? Um, so, for instance, you'll see when John shows you later on, on the data, we can kind of estimate what the actual efficiency of that intercooler is and see that it doesn't drop off with many gear pulls as the stock one might. So. Speaking of the stock one, do we test this stock or do we just test on our own parts? We absolutely test this stock. We need that baseline to validate or to, to ensure that we are actually making a performance improvement over the base. Awesome. Well, that's a good rundown. I think next awesome. thing we need to grab John, who's our calibrator take this puppy, slap it on the dyno, and then we get to see the other side of the benefit of this system. So thanks a lot, Fantastic. man. Fantastic. Thank you. You can see we've got the car on the dyno now, and this is John Hebel. He's an R&D calibrator. He's going to take a couple minutes and tell us a little bit about how the calibration team can use the same sensor kit that we talked to Jimmy about to give hard parts a little more feedback to help design the parts even better. So show me what we've got on the screen here. So right now we've got a few parameters from the access port which we logged, which is RPM, manifold absolute pressure, and load actual. And then we've got our eight custom sensors that we put on the car uh, for pressure and temperature. And then we have custom math channels from 
these eight pressure sensors that help us further interpret the data. So the information at the top is data that the access port can really provide anybody. Yep. Uh, but this section here is where we get into the custom kit, and this is information that most of it you wouldn't have if it wasn't for what we just talked about with Jimmy, right? Yeah, the biggest thing really that we were looking at, especially with the intercooler and the intake, is the pressure delta and the temperature delta across the intercooler. And then the bottom, these are uh, taking that information and then you've done some custom uh, setups in order to give you a little more information yeah. that's more specific to the, the changes between stock and aftermarket, right? So yeah. tell me specifically what's valuable here. So this red line here is intercooler efficiency. Uh, the top line is the Cobb intercooler and the bottom line is the stock intercooler. And as you can see, during a second, third, fourth gear pull, this is taken at the top of a fourth gear pull and the efficiency of our intercooler is 95% or just under and the stock one is at about 76%. Kind of amazing how much the intercooler pulls out, how much temperature it pulls out because you're you know, you're talking about 283 degrees of compressor outlet temperature after the air comes in, gets compressed, it gets heated. Yeah. And then as it goes through the intercooler, you're dropping down to 92.8 degrees yeah. when there's an ambient temperature of just 90 degrees. So it's, and, it's and a And it's not even drop. cold outside. It's pretty warm to yeah. begin with. So it's going to make a huge difference for people that are in, you know, warm climates or that are racing the car, doing things where they're, they, you know, they're not just commuting to work every day. So... So in summary, really what we're doing is we're adding some extra sensors on the car that Ford doesn't provide. What that does is gives the engineering team extra information so they can start with a baseline, then they can make a prototype. Someone like John can test it on the dyno, give some feedback, and then we can just keep doing that until we end up with the best part possible as opposed to just something that might be better than what you got from Ford or any other car that we support. How's that sound to you, John? Sounds pretty good. All right, guys, that's all the time we've got today, but we'll keep you updated as we keep working on the project. John, thanks for your time. We'll see you later. Absolutely.